Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, July the 4th, 2021. I am your presenter today. I am Reverend Mary Tillman, an associate member of the clergy staff at the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. Our summer quarter study is Confident Hope. We're continuing in Unit 1, Jesus Teaches About Faith. This is Lesson 5 in Unit 1, and it's the last lesson in this unit on Jesus teaching about faith. The lesson title in the Adult Quarterly is Attitude of Gratitude. In the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults, the lesson title is Expressing Thanks. Our devotional reading is Isaiah chapter 56, verses 1 through 8. The background scriptures, Leviticus chapters 13 and 14, Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 16, and Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Our print passages for today's lesson are Leviticus 13th chapter, verses 45 and 46, and Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. I will be using the New Living Translations for our lesson discussion today. The key verse of our lesson today, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. That's Luke 17 verse 15 from the NIV Bible. But from the New Living Translation, I like the way it reads. It says, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God, I'm healed. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your word. Please open our understanding so that we may practice your teachings in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. As I stated, this is our last lesson in Unit 1, Jesus Teaches About Faith. The lessons in Unit 1 revealed the hope and faith that comes through Jesus' teachings and miracles. How often do you reflect on God's goodness, God's grace, God's mercy, and express gratitude through praise and worship for the marvelous and miraculous things He has done in your life? Today's lesson reminds us that we should not take God's blessings for granted. So get your Sunday school book, your Bible, your commentary, your pen and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this lesson. Let's get started. For our lesson background and introduction, we're reminded the phrase, much obliged, which means to be indebted or grateful, is rarely heard these days, but it was an expression commonly used in previous generations. My grandfather would use it a lot of times when thanking someone for doing him a favor. I must admit that far too often the words thank you and I appreciate you are not used enough these days in our everyday lives. Would you agree? It, would, it used to be that we would uh, hand motion for a driver to come over in our lane when we were driving and we saw they would have their signal light on to move over and they would throw up their hand and a wave of thanks. But we don't see that anymore these days. People just tend to take our kindness for granted. Something to think about. When's the last time you gave someone a hand wave for allowing you to move over into their lane of traffic? In our lesson today, there are three questions to consider. Question number one, what did the Leviticus law require persons with leprosy to do? Question number two, what did the ten men with leprosy ask of Jesus? And question number three, what did Jesus say to the one man who returned in gratitude after his healings. Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. The two scripture passages in this lesson were written more than a thousand years apart, but the text from Leviticus gives important context for the account found in Luke. 
The 13th chapter of Leviticus is devoted to the identification and regulation of skin diseases as part of the legal code for Israel. While we may see leprosy as a medical problem, it was a religious and community issue for God's people in that day. They saw it as a punishment for sin. Leviticus chapters 13 and 14 specifically discusses the law of leprosy. Between the time of the Exodus and the first century, the laws regarding leprosy became entrenched in Hebrew culture. Jews had no physical contact with lepers who were largely confined to leopard colonies or forced to live alone outside the villages and cities. Levitical laws kept the uncleanness away from the holy tabernacle of God. It was a broad range of skin diseases. Some of them were deadly. Now let's fast forward to our lesson today in the 17th chapter of Luke. We see Jesus had just finished teaching lessons on living a godly life through the parables. He spoke to the disciples about things that caused people to stumble with a particular emphasis on forgiveness in verses 3 and 4 of this 17th chapter of Luke. A major point Jesus made was this. No matter how many times a person offends us, whenever they ask for forgiveness, we should find it in our hearts to forgive them. I know this is a tall test for us, but we must If we desire to be soul winners for Christ, we must learn how to forgive those who mistreat and misuse us. It's a process, my brothers and sisters. The disciples responded by asking how they could get more faith. And Jesus used the example of a mustard seed. See verses 6 of the 17th chapter of Luke. It's a good chapter to read. It is important to note that Jesus had concluded his Galilean ministry and was making his way to Jerusalem for the final act of God's plan of redemption at Calvary. As Jesus and his disciples continued on their journey to Jerusalem, they came upon a group of men, 10 men to be exact, stricken with leprosy. Apparently, the 10 men recognized Jesus And in a bold, loud voice, they pleaded to Jesus for mercy. They appealed to Jesus to be healed. They had faith that Jesus could heal them from this chronic, debilitating disease. As we deal further into the lesson, this week's lessons, there are aims. And as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Number one. Explore reasons why only one of ten healed lepers returned back to Jesus with thanksgiving. Number two, sense the need in your life for increased expressions of gratitude to God. And number three, develop a plan for showing thanksgiving to God and others on a daily basis. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. Outline number one, a cry of unclean grief. And we find that in Leviticus chapter 13, verses 45 and 46 from the New Living Translation Bible. It reads, Those who suffer from a serious skin disease must tear their clothing and leave their hair uncombed. They must cover their mouth and call out, unclean, unclean. As long as the serious disease lasts, they will be ceremonially unclean. They must live in isolation in their place outside the camp. Key point number one, during biblical times, Anyone with leprosy had to announce that they were unclean. According to Leviticus chapter 13 verses 45 and 46, the law required anyone with such a disease to wear torn clothes, not comb or brush their hair, cover their mouth and yell out the word unclean, unclean. This practice helped identify the lepers at a distance 
and the chanting of the word unclean gave others a warning to keep their distance so they would not become infected or declare ceremonially unclean according to the law. It is important to note that the Samaritans followed the regulations of the book of Leviticus, thus submitting to Levitical law and other laws of Moses. This includes the same exclusion of lepers from society that the Jews observed. This was done so they would not defile anyone spiritually or medically. Key point number two. Those who had the disease of leprosy shared a common experience of misery that brought them together despite any religious or ethnic differences. People with leprosy in those days were literally marginalized by their disease and forced to forge their own community of outcasts on the outskirts of Jewish and Samaritan communities. According to the Levitical law, lepers were required to remain separated from the general society, living alone or with others who shared the same affliction. Lepers were forced to live in social isolation, away from families and friends and all that was familiar to them. Just imagine how devastating it must have been to be declared unclean, isolated, and prohibited from interacting with family and and your friends. We know that at least some of the ten leopards was a Samaritan. At least one of them was a Samaritan. Jews ordinarily despised Samaritans to the point they had no dealings with them, even avoiding traveling through their country. We see this in John chapter 4 when Jesus met the Samaritan woman at the well. Remember he said he had to go through Samaria. She reminded him that he was a Jew and she was a Samaritan woman and that Jews would have nothing to do with the Samaritans. Outline number two, a cry for unexplainable grace. Luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 14. From the New Living Translation Bible it reads, As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten men with leprosy stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. Our lesson now shifts from the law concerning leprosy to a group of men with leprosy having an encounter with Jesus. Can you imagine having an encounter with Jesus, your own personal encounter with Jesus? This group of men with leprosy were mixed cultures of both Jews and Gentiles. Key point number one, 10 men with leprosy meet Jesus and asks for mercy. Putting their differences aside, these men believed that Jesus could heal them. Following the safe distance requirement, they cried in unison in a loud voice. Verse 13 said, they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. The definition of mercy is God gives us what we don't deserve. We need to stop right here and tell God thank you for his grace and mercy towards us today. You know what? I'm of the persuasion that there is strength in numbers. And when a gathering of folk have one goal in mind, when we are touching and agreeing on the same matter, we can collectively call on Jesus in a loud voice with a oneness of mind and we will get his attention to come and see about us. You know what? It didn't matter that they were from different cultures because all of them wanted to be healed. They wanted the same thing. So they laid aside everything that didn't matter and focused on the one thing they had in common. They needed the healing from Jesus. They kept the main thing the main thing and united their voices with a plea for mercy. Oh my goodness, I'm getting happy just thinking about the unity in that group of men afflicted with the deadly disease of leprosy. Key point number two, their cry drew Jesus' attention to them. 
Jesus looked at them. He saw their condition. He saw their need. Jesus shows no hesitation or discomfort regarding the lepers. He made no differences in them and healed all ten. Luke is pointing out that God's grace is for everybody. God is no respecter of persons. They were healed of leprosy on a word and a walk of faith. (laughs) They responded in their faith when Jesus said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And Jesus healed them on their way. Each of them had enough faith to call on the master and to obey his command. They headed toward the priest by faith, accepting that the healing was being accomplished before it had fully manifested. Jesus requested that the men, by the law, that that after one was healed, that the person was to go and show him or herself to the priest who would certify they were clean. After this, they would be officially eligible for restoration in the community. Outline number three. A cry of uncontrollable gratitude. Luke chapter 17, verses 15 through 19. From the New Living Translation Bible, it reads, One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God! He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, Stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Key point number one. Only one of the ten men cured of leprosy returned to say thank you in verse 15. It was an uncontrollable cry of gratitude. Just imagine how this man felt, realizing he could go home to his family and friends He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet in thanksgiving and praise for this miraculous blessing. And the scripture says he was a Samaritan. He was overwhelmed with gratitude. He showed his appreciation and love by bowing at the feet of Jesus in humble worship. Key point number two. Jesus questions why the other healed lepers did not return to thank him. He asked, didn't I heal 10 men? We find that in verse 17. Verses 18 and 19. Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Samaritans were considered foreigners. The Jews despised the Samaritans. But Jesus told the man to get up. His faith had made him completely well. He had no need to be proclaimed clean by a priest. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. This man, filled with an open expression of gratitude, was made whole, both physically and spiritually. As Christians, we should model gratitude and take time to express our appreciation to God for all his provisions as well as for others who God blesses, who God uses to bless us. Let me say that again. As Christians, we should model gratitude and take time to express our appreciation to God for all his provisions as well as for others who God uses to bless us. God desires that we recognize and value the things that he does for us. We should not take him for granted. When we pray, worship, and give our tithe, our talent, and our time, we're showing God gratitude. The way we treat others is an open display of our gratitude or our lack thereof for what God has done and is doing in our lives. Please note that we are not entitled to God's mercy. 
but because he loves us, we are the beneficiaries of this gift. No, we're not deserving of it. But that's even more the reason to show our appreciation to God. Now put your pen down. Let's lift holy hands toward heaven and tell God, thank you, much obliged. Praise God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. In summary, we learn from this week's lesson that God loves his entire human creation and calls us to do the same, to love one another. And as an update to this lesson, today leprosy is known as Hansen's disease. Thankfully, There are medications available to treat those who need them for possible manageability. It is spread by respiratory droplets, coughs or sneezes, and that's according to the Mayo Clinic and others. Number two, this unit dealt with Jesus' teaching about faith. We have seen examples of incredible faith in the midst of hatred, discrimination, and pressure. And number three, we've seen Jesus save his disciples from the raging waters of the Sea of Galilee twice. We've seen Jesus heal men and women from all illnesses and conditions where there was little to no hope of healing. God is able to work great miracles of release and relief if we can trust him. Our future deliverance and breakthrough are connected to our faith. I'm going to say that one again. Our future deliverance and breakthroughs are connected to our faith. Are you holding on to your faith? Will you trust God in any situation? Do you believe no matter what comes and what goes that God can bring you through? Do you have the faith as the size of a mustard seed that you can speak to your situation, speak to your circumstance, stance, speak to your condition, and that God will move in your favor? It's working for our good when we trust and believe and don't doubt. We know that God can work it out. God can and God will fix it for you just like he fixed it for me. He is no respecter of persons. He can do anything but fail and realize that sometimes when things linger on, there is a message and a lesson for us to learn. But while we're going through, let's remember that God is able. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, too hard for our God to do. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this lesson on gratitude. We thank you for this unit on faith. We realize our shortcomings in the area of expressing our thanks to you. Please forgive us. We pray for your continued grace and mercy in our lives as we apply what we've learned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. May God continue to smile upon you and keep you safe in his care. This is our prayer for you on this Sunday, July 4th, in the year of our Lord, 2021. God bless.